Don't be home soon. Yeah, that's all well, today. Look at the state of the place. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks very much. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, just a trim really, just scissors more than anything. Uh, do you want to clip it on the sides? Yeah, clip it on the sides, yeah. yeah. Four, three. What would you say it is now? It's about six. Um, no, I don't think you want to go shorter than four. Certainly not to start with. Yeah, it'll be four. Because you've got quite thick hair, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of it. It's uh, not good to mend it. Are you busy? No. Have a day off? No. So, um, my dear mother, so I haven't seen you in a few weeks. Let's go to the beach. Blackpool, then. Uh, Colwyn Col Col Bay. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. That was fine. When it wasn't raining. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, that's quite nice of them. So, yeah. No. Not a busy day. Better than Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> what are you Yeah, you know, busy generally and... Uh... <coughs> Same old, same old, really. Web design and photography, videoing. Uh, what sort of photography do you do? I, I do, I do a lot of, quite a bit of wedding photography. Yeah. Not, not huge amounts. You don't get loads anymore because we're overrun as a profession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All at each other's throats for work. It is just crazy because they've only really got the online presence. They don't have shop fronts, do they? Yeah, yeah, photographers. Yeah, yeah. So I don't get a huge amount of work, but I absolutely love doing mm. it. Uh, and I, I've got, I've got it well signed up. Uh, there's not a wedding I wouldn't take on these days. Mm. That's good. So it's kind of nice. It's a nice change from mm. being a shopkeeper and a hairdresser. Um, it's a fabulous day if you get treated like royalty. Yeah, do you have to him? Um, and you produce something that generations will appreciate and mm. enjoy, you know. So I love it. You must see all sorts of weddings and stuff. That you must, you must see all sorts of people do things, doing things differently. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some strange things. I've seen grown men cry at the altar, which is always very moving. <laughs> and I've yeah. seen a best man nearly ruin a wedding day with his speech. <laughs> yeah, I believe three quarters of an hour it went on for. Are you but kidding it, me? No, and he just tried to be a comedian and it oh. didn't work. And yeah. I thought the bride was going to burst into tears okay. and that Instagram was going to just launch himself at him. <laughs> That was a difficult three quarters of an hour. Oh, that's quite funny. And he knew when nobody else, nobody in the room was responding to the jokes. Uh, you, you, you hear it in a person's voice, don't you? When they know they've kind of blown it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he knew, time to wind this up, it's not really going down that well. He had, he had insulted the bride and all, oh, you wouldn't, all, all in the name of humour, but it just wasn't good humour. Uh, she looked, I've got a photograph of her looking pretty good. <laughs> and uh, he then went on to show the video that he insisted on showing at the end of a three quarters of an hour speech that nobody liked. Took five minutes to get it working. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, that was embarrassing. It was a them on holiday and their mankinis. Nobody wants to see that at a wedding. No. They don't. Uh, <laughs> it will forever be talked about at an otherwise very beautiful day. Yes. 
I'm sure I everybody's that might been at least yeah. the bride and groom. Or say, well, I don't know if we remain best friends after that, but they were since they were six years of age. No, <laughs> no. I was no, not this, no, not that. There were some cracking photos of it, huh? Images. Uh, what's the weirdest wedding you've been? The weirdest was a couple who were taking their vows again after 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, very working class folk, bless them, and all their extended family and hard men and wild boys. <laughs> At the hotel, which one was it? On the road, palace. Uh, just before you get down to the centre on the right, which one is it? Is it the palace? Mostly the old BBC. Yeah. Yeah, it's the palace. Is it the palace? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he, he came drunk. <laughs> uh, I've had that twice actually. Uh, and, and, and when I said to him, just come and stand over here for me, I need to get some photographs. And he, he went to it, <laughs> it was about this big. I was like, you know, had that happened here, I'd give him a real fast, sharp talking to and show him the door if need be. But at a wedding. You can yeah. get away with murder. You paid good money for this moment. So I laughed and joked and said, Yes, I know, but your wife really will want a couple of shots of you. Anyway, within 10 minutes, he was apologising, Matt. I'm really sorry, I didn't mean it. It's your wedding, it's your day, it doesn't matter. And then after the uh, registrar blessing turned upon his arm, never a good idea. Uh, to be confronted by 30 or 40 women short folk <laughs> and tried to conduct this renewing of the vows um, and, and once they'd done it one of the sons stood up and said you want a ring? I'll show you a ring I won't go into detail what happened next, but it involved trousers. And uh, <laughs> all hell broke loose. They were all chatting and, 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 and I was photographing this madness, and this poor registrar stood against the wall. It really, it, it just, just made you think that they'd all done a line or something. Everybody just went a bit. And. Uh, I went and stood next to this bloke, how you doing then fella? He went, they're lively, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little yeah, mate. I like that. And then they got leathered in the hotel. I photographed it all. Uh, at the time of my life, I love it. I yeah, it's yeah. laying me good money. Wasn't it? So, that was a weird one. That was a really weird one. Uh, I think that's about the only weird one I've ever done. I've done some beautiful weddings, beautiful couples, mm -hmm. uh, just astonishing. That's what I like about it. It's a bit, I uh, oh, jack the lad. The last uh, day. You, you know, you know I, the last one I did was at Salford Keys. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Uh, in the hotel. Uh, very much. But swanning around the hotel all day, looking important because you've got a camera and yeah. you're Big climbing camera. over tables. But then you got then you got people then you got family members and other people who can compete with you with their big cameras as well. They don't know no, no, that they're easy. That's, <laughs> most of them don't have big cameras, they have little iPhones and do that. Uh, you will have the occasional one. The occasional, yeah, the occasional you're always, dance. You're always, I, two two weddings. weddings. Two weddings I've had guests who've got better kit than me. And who, as you would do, come and stood next to me. <laughs> uh, and I just think that's fine because I'm far more creative than you. Uh, you're still learning the job and I could do this now on a Kodak throwaway, you know. Uh, and, and you only get to take a few. I get to take the full day. <laughs> or, but it has, once or twice, and, and there was one bloke tried to kind of, you know, and it is 
like, well, I just went to the city and just, you know. Uh, so, so, but rarely, rarely, most people generally offer a lot of respect. They you know you're doing a difficult job. Uh, and you do climb under, over tables, hang from rooftops. No, it's not quite that extreme. <laughs> but you do what nobody else does. Mm. And I've often had people say to me, I've watched you work all day. Yeah, you're doing day. it at a wedding. You know, yeah, it's just 10 hours of absolute fun, but I don't, I rarely stop, and I, I, I don't mess about, I don't get in the way, but I, 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 I get where I need to be to get the shots I need, and, and people notice that I didn't work hard, uh, but that's what I love doing, it's just great fun, unfortunately, Everybody decided to become a wedding photographer about the same time as me. And we now have millions of them in Manchester. Mm. Um, although I'm on page one of Google, I've got three websites on oh, yeah. page three and above. They were all on page one. Because uh, I, 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 I keyword stuffed it a bit. Yeah, there's ways, there's ways to like make it more hitable, isn't Google it? Google will kick your butt fast. But I've learned an awful lot about web design over 10 years. Yeah. I know mm. mountains about it. So I threw them up quickly. Uh, only two or three months. One, one of them's been around for five years. That just sits nicely uh, and needs a little bit more boosting. Because what's happening is hundreds of other people are doing what I'm doing yeah. to boost their websites. Yeah. So we're in a bit of a death match, to be honest. Uh, and I never like to be second best at anything. <laughs> I will dominate the top <laughs> of Google again. Because I did, I shot up there lightning fast because I know how to do that. But within weeks, Google's beginning to think, hang on out, this title doesn't make sense. Manchester photographers, photographers, Manchester. No, that's called keyword stuff, then you're getting a kick in. So when it starts to drop ranks, you then go back and check all your and they're big websites. I've done a, I've done a couple of very big web uh, websites of my photography. So there's 20, 30 pages on each one, and you know you got to go back and check all the SEO and the and the titles. Uh, so yeah, you know I like web design and I've got a wedding directory. That, uh, that's beginning to work nicely. I'm in competition with some big players, but mine's better than theirs. And I'm infinitely cheaper, infinitely quicker to use. And for five, six, seven years, I've been testing every script out there, because I know, uh, I know there's money to be made. Mm. Uh, and I have just found two scripts after seven or eight years of, of, of looking at this, I don't spend 24-7 doing this, but, uh, but it has is, it is dogged me, because I know what I'm capable of. I know I've got the, the ideas. I needed a script that, 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 that broke your heart, you know, and there aren't any. Gumtree isn't it, Viva Street isn't it. Mm. All those scripts, which are easy to clone, Facebook, I can set up a Facebook website in 10 minutes. It's, it's all the scripts are quickly climbed. And, uh, anyway, I've just found two scripts. One of them I found two weeks ago, and I've learned over the years wait a week. Go back and when you ignore it for a few days, you know, because I play with it for hours. And it is beautiful, it's wonderful, it's everything I can want, except I just found another one that's even better. And finally, these script kiddies are coming to realise you need the all singing, all dancing, and I've just found one that's astonishing. What do you mean by like, the scripts? <clears throat> it's, uh, they're, the, they're the core content of, of things like Gumtree or, okay. or Viva Street or whatever. You know, um, dating sites, you can set a dating site up in 20 minutes for $30. Uh, 
It'll then cost you $30 a month. It's full of the same faces on every other dating site because it's mainly database driven, though some real people join. Mm -hmm. And then there's lots of fake ones that admin put up there. Uh, and you can install, you can have a, you can have dating script in 20 minutes, $30. It's useless because there's billions of dating sites. They're insipid places. Uh, and they're full of nonsense and untruths a lot of the time. There are also the few real people on them, and there are, they, you know, they're not, they're, there are real people on them. I've dated a couple of them, so I know. <laughs> uh, i waste the time that was as well. Uh, they're not exactly the most adventurous souls. Uh, but in effect, it's it's lies and more damn lies, to be honest, and and, and all that stuff is all dating sites are like it. Dating for the over hundreds, dating for the under twos, you know, any old dating site hell do. Um, and it's all con. I say we run the con, you know, in everything these days, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. The bankers started it, and then the politicians thought, well, I'll crack at that. Uh, so yeah, you know, so 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 that's what I mean anyway. Uh, scripts for, and I've just found. I spoke to the. I use Skype. I'm I'm a web nut. I spend, I spend my life on the internet, doing stuff, not wasting the time. I hate place. Facebook. <laughs> well, the internet is effectively imploding, isn't it? What is there on there really of any use anymore, except my website, <laughs> my photographs. <laughs> No, you know what I'm saying though, it's become a it's become a, a junkyard. Wait, see you, Jim. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's all this good stuff on there, the revolutions that come and the, and the, and the dates you get and the, uh, but by and large. Facebook, what's Facebook? I hate Facebook. I have to use Facebook for business. Uh, and it's very useful to know when a, a new nephew or niece has been born. Yeah, that's or, good. All that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, or when it's someone's birthday, you should really remember. It's a great brain drain of them, guys. I don't give a monkey's what people were doing 20 minutes ago <laughs> with whatever. Yeah, and I sometimes did. Oh, I've, I've got very radical about it now. I'm, I'm now purposely sending out disinformation. <laughs> just, fake, just fake information. <laughs> Uh, it's not true about peaches. No, that's a terrible, terrible humour. I'm guilty of that sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's a conspiracy. Conspiracy theory. Uh, aliens are real. Yeah. Uh, you never know. Yeah, I know. I'm here, so there's proof of some sort of science <laughs> extra chance in your life. Uh, yeah, you know, Facebook is, is, is me email. Now as a webmaster who builds a lot of websites, uh, I, I try a lot of things out, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, so I invite spam. I know I do by the nature of, oh, they're saying just give us your email and we'll send you loads of rubbish. But I need to know what this rubbish is. Uh, but my email inbox is nothing. But junk. For people trying to sell me stuff I don't want, don't need. And I just think, what a sad state of play. Uh, so we've much abused a, 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 ter a, you know, a revolutionary system of communications, haven't we, really? Uh, yeah, really. You know, and you don't have to go to, you, you know, you, you, you can find anything on the web and you don't have to look for anything, you know. So it's, a, it's, a, it's freedom, it's the freedom to choose, isn't it? But, but it's just one big advert, isn't it? Everything, oh. everything you do online, you are intruded upon by people wanting to sell you stuff. And that's what I hate, and I'm a salesman. I sell haircuts and wedding photography. I sell membership to my website. I, I'm a salesman, but oh, gently, gently, guys, you know. We've just become one massive try to sell stuff. And the less we have, the more we try to sell to each other. I've noticed this, the online thing. 
So cyberspace is critical cyberspace these days. Uh, I'm growing very disenchanted with it. <laughs> I want to go back to good old paper books and oh, board books and sitting at home thinking, what can I do? I'm bored now. Uh, no, I need a laptop. I'm addicted to them, I don't mind admitting it. Mm. My laptop treats me much better than any lover has ever done. <laughs> I don't fall out with a laptop. Unless <laughs> it breaks. Yeah, even then, it's just our IP and down to the little children, isn't it? Yeah, you know? Women, oh, it's a different matter altogether. There's heartbreak, pain, scars, emotional wounds. Yeah. I'm still in the car. Getting your own back. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to do any race anymore, so I've been around long enough and had enough divorces to know the only person you can really trust in life is yourself. <laughs> I'm such an old cynic these days, but it suits me. You learn quite quickly in this job. If you're really miserable, people do as they're told much quicker. They stop moving and fidgeting if you yell at them. <laughs> Damn public relations. I've written a book on Barbary. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's true. This is why I got so bored with everything else. Uh, but I, uh, I thought I'd write a book on Buddhism and Barbary. Together, conflicting. I've I've unified the two separate parts. Uh, it's it's as caustic as it can possibly be. <laughs> uh, I'm going to unleash it on the world scene. I don't know. If you, you know, when I say that, I do mean probably one on there and one at home. You know, I'm, so not, I'm not sure I'll be snapped up by by. Penguin classics, yeah. <laughs> but I'm working on Morrissey got a deal with them and I figure I'm every bit as good a writer as he is actually. There you go. Now we just write some of the best music in the industry. <laughs> Songs. Uh, yeah, so I, I, it just is. It's just like this is staring at me in the face. The madness that is barbering and hairdressing. The, the things I've seen, the things I've done. That I mean, you wouldn't believe it. when I said you wouldn't believe it. So I thought stuff it right. <laughs> Short stories. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not. A, I don't profess to be a great writer, but I'm a bit funny, and I can hammer some of it down, and I can be caustic and sarcastic, and I figure that all makes for a pretty good read, especially when it's about you sitting in this chair now, sir. You don't know what I'm going to write about you tonight. Could write anything. Could write anything. <laughs> You are looked upon favourably, sir. Yeah, right. Not everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. You just get where it's like. I've read a thousand books. I can't find. I don't read fiction unless it's science fiction. I don't really read that. I like. I like stuff that I consider to be real solid stuff, like Buddhism. Uh, and and and. And famous people, and lots of famous people. But you know, I mean, I don't, I don't read novels. I can't do with novels. I don't mind like reading black magic or the occult or the life of Jesus or Bruce Springsteen's life history. But novels, I can't do them. No matter how good, I've read, I've read, I've read, I've read a couple of novels in the mm. Brilliant ones, I have to say, but. But you know, I like a cup of tea. I like I like stuff that drags you about. So I wrote a book that drags you about a bit. And uh, and uh, um, somebody had read a bit of it and, and given me a favourable review. There you go. They liked it. So yeah, it's just interesting. A long, long time ago, I 
Uh, I read something in the press, it was entirely the wrong thing. It was a London hairdresser, mm -hmm. Daniel Ponce, who was bragging about all the fame. He, he destroyed his career overnight. Oh, I slept with this famous person, I did the hair of this famous person, I know what. He's in the bloody sun, the bloody sun or whatever it is. And he's surrounded by three stunning young girls, this hairdresser, looking well smug with himself. This goes back a long time, this 20 years ago, but I've never forgotten it. And at the bottom of this photograph, in tiny writing, it says models supplied by. And this, this is why I don't like hairdressing much. I was a ladies hairdresser for 25 years. Uh, but you're surrounded by people who do things like that. I just died in shame on the day I read it, you know. Uh, this is not what I want to be associated with. Uh, and, and I've seen so many things like that. And then uh, uh, probably ten years ago, I, I'm not the first by to write a book. I, I, I saw a book written by a former barber. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, he's gone into being a, a psychic and a mystic. Oh, really? um, goes to expensive shows and earns a lot of money for the old ladies. Um, which has got to be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact, it was, it was this guy, I'm not sure I believe a word he says about this. Though I, I too, make some pretty weird claims. Um, but he wrote the book. He wrote the book. And I just, and that's been dogging me for 20 years. Just, you can do this now. And then about 15 years ago, I did a separate course. Uh, and that, that, that really was probably the, the bit that, the bit that bit. And it just wouldn't leave me alone. And about, I don't know, a year ago. Sat home, it's raining again, I've got nothing to do. I've bored to death of computing. I built all my websites and I thought, come on, just knock out a sentence and see if you're any good at this. Uh, and, I, and it turns out I'm, I'm not bad at it at all. And the secret, I figure it's no secret, I figure if you can make somebody laugh and cry, you've got an audience. If I can make you laugh and I can make you cry. And this book does that. Um, makes me cry. <laughs> makes me laugh. And sometimes I'm sitting in the flat howling. They must wonder what's going on downstairs. The bloke upstairs is obviously falling around the flat. What, what's he been on? He sounds deranged. It's just because I thought it something really funny. I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's like yeah. when are you finishing? When? It's finished. Uh, and you self-publish on Amazon. All right. So it's listed. It's on Kindle. It's on Amazon, uh, and nobody really knows about it yet. I'm I'm procrastinating again. Uh, I've told quite a few people, but I dare not tell them how to get it or where it is or even if they want it, because it is pretty left field, very left field. Uh, But at some point, I'm going to have to come out of the closet. <laughs> I'm not referring to my sexuality either. <laughs> uh, that was a ladies' hairdresser for 25 years. I did put up with a certain amount of prejudice and, uh, and, and, and homo, homophobic curiosity. Bastards, I had to send them home to their wives. <laughs> Single male hairdresser. Oh. Uh, I had just come out of a ten-year relationship with a gorgeous stunt. Well, that's the one the blokes in the portal crying it over me. And it's that kind of the assumptions people work under so easily, so quickly. Uh, and how men aren't very good at looking after themselves in general. Bit of a problem in barbering occasionally. I've thrown one or two out for that. <laughs> oh. Is that short enough on top? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm not sure if I can use this now as a professional serious video or whether it has to be to go into the comedy head club. I'm not sure yet. Sure, is right? Yeah. I think I think it's on the, just about on the safe side. Yeah. Uh,
I just want people to see all about my precision, symmetrical hair cutting skills uh, and my great